Hi, this is Mike Mench, and welcome to the first in a series of tutorials that I'm calling Shake is Money. What Final Cut Pro editors can do now in Shake to earn money while they read the manual and learn what Shake's really for. We'll start off with a rather easy one, but very effective in the right hands. Now I know you've never gotten anything from a DP that might have been a little shaky, but if you did, here's a great fix. It's the Smooth Cam Node in Shake. And I think you'll find this technique easy to do, and it'll be better than anything you could do straight in Final Cut Pro. Shake 4 introduced porting directly from Final Cut Pro to Shake and back, and there's a few limitations. It's only for QuickTime files, formatted media files, or QuickTime formatted media files, so uh, QuickTime audio, standalone audio, stills, generators, composite modes, motion effects, and filters aren't coming with us into Shake. But that's okay, because of what it will bring. It brings multiple files strung together, and it brings multiple clips stacked for compositing later in Shake. Alright, so here we are in Final Cut Pro, and I've got two clips that just aren't as smooth as, uh, as I would have hoped. Uh, you know, I'd wish I'd brought a tripod, and on this one I'd wish I'd brought a dolly, but I didn't. And I can uh, do it here in Shake, so let's go ahead and send these into Shake and fix them. Select these clips and uh, we can either right click or control click to bring up our contextual menu and down here at the bottom of the first part is send to and we want to send to shake this will open up our send sending dialog box and uh, we want to change our resulting screen our resulting sequence name and then we choose our shake script and put that somewhere where we can find it later and we want to choose a uh, placeholder for the movie that it's going to create out of shake and so we should probably put that on an external volume and let's go ahead and do that uh, those uh, warnings are popping up because I did this as a practice so you want to make sure that launch shake is selected and then go ahead and hit export that does two things. It sends a uh, placeholder into the track above the ones we were, and it will also open Shake. So, this is Shake, and uh, let's do a quick welcome. There's four windows. There's the Node View window. There's the Viewer itself, the Tool tabs, as well as the Parameter tabs. Let's get into the Node View here. Oh, uh, before we get started, Shake was built for a three-button mouse, and I get by with my two button and a bunch of button mashing on the keyboard. Uh, one, mice, one button micers, well, you better stop now and, and go get something else. When starting a sequence that's, that's not set from Final Cut Pro, you'll need to get a file in node. And so if we click file in, that opens up the new strange shake file directory system. Don't get too confused. If you need something on your desktop, just uh, drill back to your... Uh, root there, find users, click on it, your uh, username, and then your desktop is available to you right there. If you're looking for something on an external drive or a, uh, a different drive in your system, other than uh, your system drive, you want to look under volumes because that will give you all of your vo volume names and you can bring in uh, anything you want from there. And you just keep drilling down until you find something that you want and then say OK, and that will bring in uh, the new node um, for later processing. But let's go ahead and get rid of that. We'll just click on it and hit delete. Well, let's talk a little bit about what Final Cut Pro has brought to the table. First, our file in nodes and the clips, and also a select node right below, which tells Shake when to move from one clip to the other when they're butted up next to each other in Final Cut Pro. And the next one down is a uh, multi-layer node, which lets stack clips in Final Cut Pro come in, each with their own select node, and then those select nodes tie neatly into this single multi-layer node. Okay, but that's enough. Uh, these three here, they're going to get in our way, so let's go ahead and hide them. Let's click, drag, select. I'm going to hit G right now, and that's going to group them all together. Let's go ahead and select our Tahoe clip uh, number one, uh, Lake Tahoe. And we need to find our smooth cam node, and it's right here under the transform tab. So let's click it, and then we'll click on our smooth cam node there. Oh, 
guess what? We put it in the wrong place. No problem. We can either delete it again with the delete key and start over, or we can, let's get it back there, we can uh, do what the, the reason this program was uh, named the way it was was because if you shake this node, you can get it out of the process tree and then drag it over here into another branch of the tree and as soon as everything is highlighted you let it go and bam there it is well okay let's do one more thing here let's go over to globals and the time range for both of these clips from our select node here is 152 frames uh, but if we look down here at our timeline we can only see 100 frames if We um, so what we want to do is hit this little house button and that will bring the 452 down into our timeline and so when we oops let's go ahead and bring up the the final process here when we see all of the clip all of the frames down here in the timeline um, together now uh, in in one spot but let's go back up to smooth cam and get working here um, okay smooth cam Let's go back to frame one. And over here in the parameters, let's slide this up. This is telling us a couple of things about the name and uh, the input clip that's in the smooth cam node and, and stuff like that. And the analysis range is one through 197. I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple of changes here. And then once I get it analyzing, I'll go back through and tell you why I, I did the things that I did. So uh, let's change uh, this one to 1.5, this one to 3, and we'll keep that one at 0. All right, that's in and smooth. Okay, analyze. All right, so now it's going to go through and analyze each of the frames for the movement um, that I want it to analyze. So let's go, as it's doing that, it's going to do that for 197 frames here. Uh, the analysis quality, normal or high. Normal is pretty good for um, most things. High is going to take you a little bit longer, um, but it's uh, pretty effective as well. These three things are fairly important. Uh, I like to use in, but union, if you select the union button here, what that will do is increase the size of the, the, uh, the clip, uh, shakes clip, and basically it'll increase it enough so that the entire original clip sits inside uh, uh, the, the, the unioned clip. So you'll see black borders around the entire edge, but you'll see the entire clip. Uh, that's good for some things and, and not good for others. Uh, it's your choice. Intersection, though, will completely cut out all black and make a shorter or smaller viewer window. Uh, in just leaves the size of the viewer window the same and instead just moves the clip around. Now shake works in uh, infinite space so nothing is destroyed when it goes outside of these little viewer windows. It's still there and we can move it around to, to find it. All right, as this is wrapping up, uh, let's... Uh, it's not going to let me do it. All right. Um, down here under smooth there are three options one of which of course you can't see because I hit analyze too soon uh, translation smooth is what's going to smooth out the X and Y movement of the camera now it defaults to 2.5 and that's a pretty good number to start with uh, anything more than that and it's going to try to completely stop um, uh, some of your X and Y movement uh, I chose something a little bit less than the default of 2.5 because, um, you know, the X movement of the pan here is something that I want to try to maintain, so I might as well just uh, move that down a little bit. Rotation is how much the camera is rotating, and of course I don't want any rotation. I want to try to get it at the, the horizon as level and as smooth as I can keep it, so I'm going to bump that up to 3. Zoom is if you've been messing around with your zoom and you've uh, mistakenly zoomed it in and out a little bit and you want to try to smooth some of that out uh, you can adjust the smooth zoom as well I'm telling shake by keeping it at zero that I don't want it to even think about zoom uh, because there isn't any here I don't want it to mess uh, and try to you know maybe in interpret the fact that 
um, you know, the, ca the mountains are moving off into the background here as a, a zoom out. So, so there we go. It's done analyzing. And as you can see from the last frame here, we have a little bit of black bars. And if I kind of work my way through, you'll see black bars on the top, uh, a little bit of, of junk in there, and over here um, towards the beginning. Now what I'm seeing primarily is it wanting to push everything off a little bit to the right. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to just resize this a little bit, give it a little bit of a scale. Yes, it's going to soften the uh, image a little bit, but uh, not so much that I'm going to be worried about it. So let's go ahead and make sure our smooth cam is selected, hit scale, and I'm going to hold option oops option and apple and slide it back just a little bit maybe try to find that really bad there we go that's that's kinda ugly that one oops so let's then click on this corner and it will scale from the center point I'm just gonna scale it out maybe not quite that much let's see how bad that is because again the as little I want to scale this as possible to keep the yeah this might be good because what I'm looking at now is the amount of black that's popping up on the left hand side uh, and the amount of, of uh, footage that I still have over here on the right so let's go ahead and go through that just quickly grabbing some frames I think we're going to be okay I'm going to now pan this over to the left again so underneath the scale I'm going to select a pan node make sure my scale is selected pan node just drop that in it's going to give me options to go ahead and pan yeah I think we're good all right so we scaled it up a little bit but we didn't have to scale it up a whole lot because we were able to pan and keep all of this in one place okay so now that's done uh, what you might want to do at this point is open up a, a render flipbook and so let's go ahead and do that set this to 1 through 198 now what this is going to do is build a, uh, a render as soon as I pull it up there it is it's going to build a render of our smooth cam and we'll let it go a little bit if you want to play uh, the render you can use your greater than and less than keys and that'll show you how much we have so far that black thing is it's jumping back to the beginning and if it doesn't work for you then uh, go back and readjust some of the smooth cam uh, analysis features you can strengthen up the uh, the translation or the rotation smooth uh, so that it works for you then we'd go on to the Tahoe clip uh, but I'm gonna let you do that on your own uh, for right now let me go ahead and show you the how we get this all out of here uh, click on those arrows there to open up the group if you want to get rid of the group you don't like that just click on the that right there and say yes and now you're you're, you're done all right uh, one thing that I don't like about bringing stuff in from Final Cut Pro and then bringing it back out is the the file out node do, it isn't all that bright it um, it misses a couple of things so let's bring up its parameters the file out node we want to make sure that the file format is actually QuickTime uh, my codec it pulls does pull from Final Cut Pro so yes it's DV, DVC Pro and TSC and then my codec options match that uh, indeed the frames were 29.97 but I shoot progressive so I'm going to change that and I'm, while I'm at it I'm going to change this back to 16 by 9 which is what my original anamorphic stuff was or is going to be uh, so I might as well change that now it'll save me some headaches in Final Cut Pro later hit OK uh, with that node selected, let's zoom out a little bit. With that node selected, go to render, uh, render file out nodes, and make sure that all frames are selected here. Um, we want that quality to be high, and go ahead and hit render. It'll bring up another flipbook, but this is actually a rendered flipbook. So I'm going to let that uh, go, and uh, we'll meet you up in Final Cut Pro. We open up Final Cut Pro, uh, our sequence project. 
one of the clips will be offline. We just reconnect it and uh, make sure we turn on the view track here. Uh, but let's just remind ourselves as to what these two clips look like. A little shaky. And here was that little handheld dolly shot. And after we got it into shake now, we'll turn this on and take a look at what we have. There you go. Well, I hope this trick is helpful to you, and uh, good luck with Shake, and we'll see you on the forums.